guys, I am Chris Kaler and I'm Amber Foss from Kajin Cosplay and tonight we're back again guys with Vikings! Vikings. Episode 7, A King's Ransom. Um, all hail Earl Ragnar, I guess. <laughs> okay, so the guy who was dying, he was hurt, he was, he had lost everything. And then in a span of one episode, he became Earl, learned that he was going to have another son. And I mean, he built his ships and now he's on his way to England to start another raid. <laughs> the guy is lucky. That guy is unstoppable. His emblem is the, the raven now, the crow, just like Odin. Uh, I think he's uh, spreading the legend that he's the descendant, that he's one of the Odin's son or something. So it's, it's a rumor that spread a little bit, but he's uh, playing he's that, that much rumor off. The gods. Yeah, but he's playing that rumor off a little bit. The crow on his, the side of his head and stuff, Ow, which looks really fierce, by the way. It's really cool. Rolo is uh, planning on becoming Hurl as well. He's setting his... Uh, his goal really high. We just hope he's not gonna take uh, his brother's <laughs> legacy right now. Yeah, he seems to be. Uh, what's what's her name? Gidi. Gidi. Uh, anyway, the Sigil. Sig. What? Sigi. I think it's Sigil. Sigi, but with an L at the end. I don't know. Anyway, the ex Earl's wife. Uh, he wants to marry her. He wants her by his side, maybe to start the, his own legacy. Um, could be good, could be bad. We'll we'll throw him a bone here and think well, it's good. Well, by but... one move, he had a wife and a daughter. Yeah, he but... doesn't have to wait for it. Let's wait. Let's wait to see what he does next, and and I'm gonna give him a chance because so far he's proven me wrong a couple times, but I'm still wary a little bit. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, right. So now they're going to England with uh, facing that kid, that kid, that king. <laughs> Uh, the king who likes to throw his uh, own soldiers in snakes, snake pits, so... Yeah, not much honor there, buddy. What a pitiful death. And, um, I mean, an honorless one, too. And a purposeless one as well. Like, there's absolutely no reason why he should have died there. He was telling the truth about the Vikings. The, guy, the king just doesn't like to be made fun of and, and he doesn't like to hear about I think about... he doesn't like Jenna that he got an opponent who is stronger like that. Yeah. Because he doesn't want to acknowledge that right now he is weak against them. Let's see how he handles that what uh, he handles it when they show up at his door. Alright. It's gonna be funny. Alright, let's see what happens in episode seven. Ooh. It's funny because the uh, two episodes ago, I was thinking I didn't say anything, but I look at Ragnar when he doesn't speak in anything. He's just so fierce looking, and he seems so intimidating. And then he has such a, a cute little voice. He has a, a high voice, and it's so funny. <laughs> I'm not mocking him. I just think it's it's nice because it's like he has two facets of his personality. Like he can be really terrifying, and then he can be like, "Oh, buddy, I love you." <laughs> How soon will they come? Soon enough. I hope so. I can't wait for the Valhalla. <laughs> the guy just wants to die! <laughs> He's gonna be like, come at me! <laughs> Take me! What is the problem here? The problem is her. What has she done? She has had a child. We tried for many years to have children, but without success. And then just over a year ago, a young man came to the door. I remember the day. After three days, he left. And then nine months later, she gave birth to a son. Um. <laughs> Whose child is it? I do not know, my lady. Uh... We were all in the same bed. I was too scared. You see, she is not an honest woman. He was just a young man. On the contrary, we know from our ancient stories that Vic is another name for Heimdall. The god Heimdall? My lady. Yes, the god Heimdall. Oh, she's so wise. That's just a story. Our whole lives are just stories. You should be ashamed you did not trust your wife, despite the joy and comfort she has brought you, and the fact that a god chose you of all people to visit. I do not punish her, but rejoice with her. 
drink wine with her and sacrifice one of your animals to him, Dilda God. But if I hear you have harmed this woman or this child, you will answer for it to me. Jesus Christ, she's so so she's scary. <laughs> Oh, and she needs to play it well because uh, she did it perfectly. In two words, she kind of understands. I think I think she was she was raped and she was too scared to say anything. And I mean, it could have been her husband. I mean, she couldn't say anything. She was so scared and she understood that. But how can you explain it to this guy? Give him something he can't argue against. That's another way of, uh, they're basically throwing the first punch, but they're doing it intelligently. In silence. Yep. Got them by surprise. Again, that will have screamed! I love it when he throws his axe! <laughs> My lord, we're being attacked! <laughs> you know. Careful! <laughs> he waited too long! All right, I'm ready. Whoa! Ah! <laughs> Might be the only reason he survived. Come on. I'm Lord Attenborough, brother of King Ayla. You are the brother of the king. Yet you lead his army. Does he send you to fight all these battles? In the bedroom too. <laughs> but it is true, who would send someone else to fight his own battle, huh? We should attack, or they are weak. How long will it take him to raise another army? Attack, attack, attack. That's all he ever says. <laughs> I want to talk to the king. What is there to talk about? Imagine the treasures the king keeps in his household. I want them. I want to see how he lives. What manner of men they are. And I'm hungry. Listen to me. If we agree to walk into his house, he can kill each and every one of us. You forget. We hold his brother hostage. Why should he care about his brother? Do I not care about mine? Oh. Yeah, but... We all know how Rolo feels about Ragnar. <laughs> Although, yeah, I mean, he, loyalty, loyalty. I said I was throwing him a bone. <laughs> I'm throwing him a bone. <laughs> I'll bring it back, please. And I mean, it's not because Ragnar cares about Rolo that this king cares about his brother. If he feels that he's in danger, he's gonna throw his brother in the snake pit. He's analyzing everything. Yeah. Sire, this man is Ragnar Lothbrok. He is brother Rollo and their companions. Let us feast together and then talk. <laughs> He's staying so calm and silent. He's playing with Show the guy. Show hospitality first. He's playing with the guy. What do you want? For the safe return of my brother and for leaving my kingdom. Two thousand pounds. Gold and silver. What did he say? How much? Two thousand pounds. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> I don't think I heard you. Two thousand pounds. In weight. 
That is a present. <laughs> He's so sassy. <laughs> is money all you care about? Let's see. So you invited them in your home, man. You do not attack someone you invited to your home. He keeps drinking. I agree to the terms. Good. Good. You must give me time to collect such a vast amount. I desire that either you or one of your companions agrees to be baptized into our faith. And that way, I can make peace with a friend and fellow Christian and not an enemy. It sounds like something small. Oh my god. Rollo, the fuck? I will be Christian. purpose behind this if he's Christian he wants have... to yeah he wants to have this land you think maybe gain the trust of these people could be oh Lord holy father almighty and eternal God, that's so expel the, the devil the... And his skin from that this he person. wants to be baptized though from the head from the hair from the brain, from the bra, from the chest, from the heart. From he the compares himself to this game and he's like, body, Do they really serve the thoughts, this guy? <laughs> from the words and from the deeds. On, I anoint shoulder. thee. You let it happen, dude. In the name of the Father, <laughs> and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> you need to go under water. <laughs> He's so stiff. <laughs> oh damn. May the Lord bless you and keep you from this day hence and forever. He's learning Amen. the custom. Gotta do like your old man. It's I mean gotta respect other people's religion. If they if you want them to respect yours and now his brother is yeah, part of this religion. Right now, man, I understand it, but I don't think that Flucky is. No. <laughs> Flucky just... I mean, it was funny before, but now it's his brother who's joining that religion. He needs to show some sort of respect to it. They might do this for fun, but religion is so, so huge of a deal. Like, it's such a huge thing. You think it's a trap? I would expect it. They still don't have the brother though, so would they risk it? If they thought they could kill Ragnar doing this, maybe. Empty. It's empty. They're empty! They totally disregarded their fellow Christian uh, promise. Holy shit. Oh my god. Expected them to, to try to do something stupid. Well. Oh, that was so cool. <laughs> they freaked the horses, so now they can attack all they want. I kind of wish the old man is gonna die. <laughs> Give him peace. Yeah. If I wish for him to die, or if I'm sad that he died, he wanted it to happen. He's probably smiling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, the guy already proved that he's not willing to follow his his promises, so. Don't appear weak. The guy, he gave him an offer. He said okay. He even forced one of their own to switch religion, basically. Myself on him. Bring him to justice and to death. So help me God. The death of your brother is on you, man. That's the thing. He didn't honor your promise and he died. <laughs> oh, he's so sassy. <laughs> and really tired! Take care of these uh, rings, dude! Thanks for the fun! Sorry, baby. <laughs> oh. oh. I'm so sad. She lost the baby. Yeah. It happens yeah. so often at that time, and uh, still born too. I think it's it's just that, as much as they might say that oh we're we the odds are in our favor, the gods are on our side, they are not spared from from things like this at all. They are not spared from being killed. They are not spared from tragedy. Their kids could die. Uh, the wife could become ill. Ragnar could fall in battle. It's not because they have luck on their side that they'll they'll always be lucky. So this is why they need to cherish every moment. They need to show their love for one another in the family. They need to support one another, and they need to be careful when they're in battle. Don't I mean? And I th this is also why I'm like, when you're you're on the battlefield here, he tried to offer a deal to the king like he offered the brother in exchange for gold it's fair the guy said okay he actually swore on his religion that it was gonna be okay well not on his religion but he did say that uh, i mean let's let's make one of you a christian so, so that i can make peace with a fellow christian yeah but uh, who, who's, who's the guy who betrayed them you know in the end who's the savage who's the one who did not you know Tr not tr what's the word like he did not respect his his own honor his own promise so and he was expecting it like he got prepared that's i love that ragnar was was prepared for this that was awesome by the way the fighting was so good they're really good fighters oh but that's the thing like the brother's like oh if you kill me you'll have nothing to to bargain with and i'm like yeah true but then if they decide to go back to the king and be like, ah, dude, I mean, okay, I'm gonna give you another chance. They already lost a couple of their men, and then what's to say that they won't attack again? They have much more uh, soldiers. They have a lot of, of, of power. They, they can, they're very, I mean, they have all the horses, and the, the weapons are better than their weapons. If it's, if they keep on letting them win, they they will win, you know? So, it's almost like saying, you did not follow your promise you did not stay faithful oh, not faithful but you did Pay not well, you did, you did I, no that's that's like saying i promised you that your brother would stay alive if you gave me the gold i keep my promises <laughs> you did not but i'm going to show you what type of earl i am what type of leader i am first of all i fight with my men i show up on the battlefield and i am the one leading them you don't do that i think he's like he's almost not that he's earl he can compare himself to the king he did say i want to see how he lives he wants to see the difference. He showed up at the house and he sees like the, the king who's not in shape. He's sitting on his throne. He's not with his men. The people around him, they, they're not warriors. They kind of... Um, I mean, I think he was a, a, a bit disappointed. Like he made fun of them a lot. And then they show up with their food and their religion. He doesn't really care for that. Like he's... To him, it's like, it's it's not as much as he, he thought it would be, almost. The king is disappointing. And then he betrays his own word, and, and what's the honor of being that king? Like, there's, there's nothing behind the title if he acts like this. True. 
So Ragnar is, is kind of showing, and like, you know, with he's mocking him and stuff, but the way he's, he's like waving at him and being like, <laughs> he's almost saying, dude, you call me barbarian, you call me like a savage. You're the clown of the story, technically. <laughs> yeah, like, and I mean, I'm not, I'm behind this, like, this, this interpretation of the looks and stuff because, holy shit, like, out of them both, like, sometimes we can judge what Ragnar and the Viking, Vikings are doing because when they attack the monastery, of course, they did not know what they were facing. They, they had no way of knowing if the guys in front of them were going to attack. When they started t talking in English and stuff, they did not know if they were casting spells on them. Like you told us, guys. Yes. Thanks. Uh, and I'm like, true, very true. So I'm going to give them that. Uh, they couldn't let them leave, technically, because the word would have spread. Oh, they brought back some people. They would but... have an disadvantage the next time. Yeah. So, I mean, in the first time, we could judge them, but we can also understand their side. But in this side, though, I... Yes, it's true, they showed up out of nowhere with the intention of stealing from them. Which is bad, <laughs> I, I, I agree, but in those days, that's what a lot of people were doing. That's what they are about. They are adventurers, they are scavengers. They want these things that they don't have at home. They want riches. And I mean, I'm not saying that the, the King of England has never done that either. Like, for sure, their armies do that too. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, let's not be too quick to judge uh, the Vikings here. And I gotta hand it to Ragnar. Like, I, he showed up, but he did not kill anyone, like, if he didn't have a, a choice. Like, he, he kept the prisoners. He kind of... You mean fed them? He they, they were not like dying on the floor. They were they were tied up, but they were okay. And he gave them a, a fair bargain. They allowed Rolo to, you know, get baptized and stuff, which is huge. He respected for a little bit. He respected their customs, and which is in interesting because when they show up in the hall, you see how everyone is reacting. Like you know how everyone in his group is laughing at what they they're doing. And they don't understand their their ways at all because they, they they try, they start eating and stuff, and you see all the Christians that they don't approve of that at all because they wait for the blessings yeah they wait for the blessings so, yeah. and stuff. And Ragnar finds it funny, but he still has the the respect a little bit because but that's it, that's the thing with Ragnar though. He's a Christ man who wants to learn new th new things, and he lived with a priest at home, so he heard yeah. about their religion. He he knows how big of a of a thing it of is. Of a thing it is. And I mean, if you don't, if you're not allowing yourself to at least respect and understand that some other people might <coughs> believe Sorry, in yes. other things, like it's okay if you don't believe in them. It, it's okay if you find their customs funny and their their uh writes funny it's okay but at least have the respect to understand that this is what they believe in because if you don't then why would they believe or respect that Yours, she, yeah. the same for, of you you know it's like so with i don't understand why rollo accept to be baptized because that was one of the conditions for them to receive the gold i think he was mocking them for, for real but he was really mocking them yeah i thought that for a second i almost thought like he got no uh luck at all with his own god, so why not try with the other one? <laughs> I mean, it could have been that. But... He's a Viking through and through. Yeah, but uh, and I mean, it's it's true that if you don't believe in what they're doing, there's no meaning behind the, the, the ceremony at all. So, but I appreciated that Ragnar took the time to get down on his knees like the others. He's showing respect because his brother chose to do that, and his gods. Or important for him so their god is important to them and he kind of got that so getting down on one knee giving them a little bit of respect that was good that that was really good but then they betrayed them and and they did not keep their that's, words that's so good. so for to have the king like i understand he just lost his brother and stuff but for him to be standing down on the shore and be like ah curse him i'm gonna kill him and st i'm like dude you, you totally you brought this on yourself. yourself the guy did oh. not like I would understand if he had given them the gold and Ragnar had killed the brother anyway, but he totally gave you a chance to have him. And yes, it was a lot of gold, but you're king, dude. You're supposed to have all of that already. You're, gold is supposed to be nothing for you. So yes, I understand. It's a matter of pride, actually. <laughs> nothing for him, but a big thing for the people, you might say. Oh, yeah, but the king doesn't care about that at all. He's not the one living with the people. And I mean... You are, obviously, I think it's a matter of pride at the end of the day. It's not because he 
it's a lot of money. I, I agree with you. Uh, people were shocked when he said like two thousand pounds. Two thousand pounds. And but the king, I mean, the life of his brother should be more important. But and to, for him to even not even sending the money and just decide to attack them, it's because he was cocky. He thought just like he said last episode with this guy when he showed he th threw him in the pit. He was saying like, ah, uh, what type of warrior are you uh, if you're scared of these uh, barbarians? Like. You should not be scared. I think he was cocky and he thought that he would. He was better. He didn't believe that they might have, have a better advantage than he did. That they had uh, thought about a possible attack and that they prepared because they're not dumb. Um, the king is not on the battlefield with them, so he doesn't know what he's facing. He's just sending men to the... Butcher. To the, to, yeah, to the butcher, butcher, basically. So it's easy to say, do that, you know, to send the order and not live with the consequences. I mean, you're not on the battlefield, so you don't see what's going on. So I think he got cocky and he was like, you know what, these guys, I saw them, they, they act like clowns. Um, if I, I send the fake money, if I send the empty, uh, what's the word for that? Like the empty treasures and stuff, like the, these boxes, if I send that, uh, for sure they're going to be greedy enough to go out of their camp. You and mean chest? Chest, thank you, I was looking for the, for the word. If I do that, they're going to bite and uh, they're going to take the bait and they're going to be killed like cattle because that's what they are. They're, they're animals. Um, he got surprised for sure, but then he's throwing the blame on the guy. So I'm like, dude, no, you're the one who did, a, who did wrong here. You thought you had won over them, but you did not respect them as warriors or you did not, and you did not respect their uh, intelligence and experience. Which is why I th it's funny because I thought, I think that the brother uh, felt I had a lot more respect for them, actually. I, when he got captured, he understood that he got he got defeated, and uh, he was he was at their he's mercy. And exactly, he's a warrior. So I think Ragnar felt weird that this guy was the general, and and not the, the actual king. Or where his brother is nothing like like his like he is like he's not a warrior or anything. But and he pretends to be king. So I mean, what's what's the honor in that? These are totally different customs, totally different uh, ways of being like the kids showing up and being just so scared. And, and he's, he got hurt, hurt by that. Like he was like, he was, oh, he's a family guy. Like a family, yeah. He's a, he's a father. So for him to, to be feared by a child like that, it's not supposed to be this way. And he's so, he's so sassy. <laughs> I actually think it's funny because he knows the power he has. He knows what type of man he is, and he knows how strong he is compared to these guys. It's almost a farce, you know? He, he doesn't want to pretend to fear these guys. He doesn't want to pretend that, that that this is a serious thing, because this is funny to him. The guy is not a warrior, so what the hell? And he's just <laughs> making so much fun of them. He's like, I'm, I'm trying to be serious. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> I love it. I actually, I think it's really funny. Although, I mean, I, we could say that it's sad that if he, if they had been serious, if they had tried a little more, we could argue that ah, maybe it would have worked better. But I'm like, no, the king would have betrayed them anyway. So, oh, it's so cool. It's it's so interesting to see these two sides, to see these two stories, and and to get to see like different point of view. I mean, on this on the, at this in, in this episode, I'm totally behind Ragnar here. Oh, totally, yeah. Even with the lack of respect, which he did not keep all the way. Like like I said, he bent the knee and stuff. Like he went down on his knees to respect the religion. He bent the knee. Well, not this way, but <laughs> he respected the religion a little bit. Like he gave them, he threw them a bone, like I did with Rolo. And yeah, they but they threw it back. back. Oh, by the way. Uh, other subject, I really appreciate how Lagata ruled during uh, Ragnar's absence. She yeah. had she had it in her. She's really fair. She's really intelligent. And holy shit, does she look fierce when she wants to? Like you better not cross me. Seriously, I think it's uh, it's it's great because she has as much respect as her husband. I feel like. She well, gets as much she's respect. She's the one in charge when her husband is not there. Yeah, but I mean, Siggy, do you really think that she would have well, that same respect? Like, well, she was standing her, by his side, but... Her voice would have been law if her husband were Yeah, yeah, true, away. but I feel like Lagertha, be, being a warrior and stuff, 
she has so much more presence and she gets the respect that goes with it, you know? And she was, I mean, that was great what she did. Like, she did lie. She used religion to kind of uh, manipulate the guy a little bit. But what can he say about that? Like you said, her word is law. And she's basically talking about religion here. She's using the gods to to make a point, And you can't argue against that. So True. she has she's fair. She understood what went on. And she's giving the woman a chance to still live with her child. Be a, good, have a good, be a good yeah. mother, and yeah, she's a great, she's a great character, great woman, great mom, great that's wife. A good, that's a good start. Oh yeah, I respect her a lot. Oh, Marna will be so sad when you learn about the baby. I know, I know. It's gonna be next episode. You I think. You think that the baby was gonna think that he's responsible for that because he crossed the gods? I don't know. I don't think he he, he took it seriously, but then. Loki tr was kind of push putting putting him down, and then that happened right after. And he's gonna learn about his sister who lost the baby. Yeah, but why would I don't know? We'll we'll see how he reacts. But uh... all right, we're gonna move on to the next episode because this right. is getting long, and I oh. want to see what happens. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode with us. If you want to see the next one right away, it's already on Patreon. The link is in the description. So you know the thrill, guys. You want to watch it now? You go down there, you click, and you subscribe, or you wait for the next one to be up on YouTube. Yeah. So see you soon, guys. Bye.